Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Heidi from My Reading Life, and I'm here to start my mid-month book bash vlog. And not only is it mid-month book bash for September, it is also shorty September. So I've been reading short books for the month of September, and it is mid-month book bash, which is the weekend of the 10th of the month. So today is the 9th. Um, so it's squarely in the 10th of the month this week, this uh, month for mid-month book bash. This was originally an idea that was originally thought of by Doris over at Aldi Books. And the basic premise is to try to read more than you normally would to try to get a jump start on your reading for the month. So I've been reading quite a lot of shorties and I finished two more shorties. I finished one, um, a couple of days ago and then I finished uh, another one yesterday. So the first day of Mid-Month Book Bash, which goes from the Friday through the Monday. Um, so I've got two books to talk about already. The first one is a memoir, short memoir. This is You've Changed by Pierre Mothetwa. And this is a memoir of a young woman who is from Myanmar. And the subtitle is Fake Accents, Feminisms, and Other Comedies from Myanmar. And I really enjoyed my time spent with this. It is really a collection of essays. Some of the pieces were published previously in other publications and have been brought together into this this collection. She is a, a young woman in her 20s um, who was raised in Myanmar and then went to school outside of the country um, and has lived uh, for, you know, for months in different countries and then have, has is now currently living full time in Myanmar. So I don't know very much about that country in Asia. And so it was really interesting to me to read about that culture, which is a very, uh, uh, what's the word I want very masculine oriented culture um the women like for example there's a whole essay in here about how laundry is done in this country basically male laundry and female laundry has to be kept entirely separately it cannot be washed together in the same load um so that was really fascinating and you know as a as a young woman a modern woman how she deals with the strictures of her culture or doesn't, um, how she deals with relationships, um, wanting to be a writer, wanting to pursue that for her career when it's not something that's, you know, a typical career for young women in her uh, culture. All very, very interesting. This book does not get into the political situation in Myanmar. So if you're looking for that kind of uh, book, this is not it. But if you're looking for a sort of funny observations on life and to learn about um, different cultures and how one person is dealing with that. I think that is quite interesting and I really did enjoy my time with this. this a, there was another whole section that talked about passports and who is required to have passports and what passports, which passport that you have, how that impacts sort of your privilege in life. And I thought that was all really fascinating. There's another discussion in here about accents and how, you know, whether or not you have a speak English with this or that type of accent, what that imparts to you and how you move through the world. I thought that was very interesting. So yeah, I really enjoyed my time spent with this. So if you're looking for a short, funny memoir written in essay form, this is a good choice. And then yesterday I finished A Room with a View by E.M. Forster. This is my second Forster book and I did not like it as much as I liked Howard's End. Um, part of that might be I listened to the first half on audiobook and then I read the second half and I think maybe I enjoyed it more reading it in the physical form. So the first half of this book uh, tells a story of two English women who are vacationing in Florence, Italy. Uh, they arrive at this sort of like hotel boarding house type place in Florence and they are upset because even though they had asked for a room with a view they have not been given a view their room faces the courtyard and during the meal um it's sort of a communal meal where all of the english speaking people are eating together uh two men offer to give up their room so that the ladies can have a view because they have a view and then the story ensues from there and it is sort of um a young woman's coming of age, figuring out what she wants in life. It is a comedy of manners. It is in some ways reminding me quite a bit of uh, a Jane Austen book in some ways, but with more edge um, and not quite as charming as I find Jane Austen to be. So this was a book that I would say I liked but didn't love. Uh, I think our main character Lucy is interesting but not particularly uh somebody that i felt i connected with um and so sometimes i felt she was quite uh 
she could be quite off-putting to me. Um, and the other characters, similarly, uh, I felt ab about them. Like, nobody really comes off quite, uh, quite 100% <laughs> uh, great in this novel. And I will say, too, that Forster likes to uh, turn, turn things upside down. He likes to have... Uh, unexpected things happen with his characters so yeah there's a couple of twists and turns in here that I didn't see coming that were interesting so yeah it was a good book but not great like I said I think I enjoyed Howard's and more but I do I am glad that I read this one so that made um shorty number seven for the month so I've read seven shorties so far um I'm currently reading a novella a romance novella by um, I, I'll put the gif up here. I'm reading it in ebook form. I can't remember the name of it, but I believe it's by Courtney Milan and it's Mrs. Martin something, something, something. Um, and I don't remember exactly what it is, uh, but I will put the gif up here. I've only read the first couple of chapters, so that will be the book that I'm focusing on today. It is Sunday of Mid-Month Book Bash, and I have finished a couple more shorties, so I figured I'd pop on here and talk to you about them. Apologize for the squirrel that's going nuts in the woods right now. Um, if you can hear that, that is what that noise is, is a squirrel. So the first, well, I, fi I actually finished two more shorties yesterday. The first one was Miss Martin's Incomparable Adventure by Courtney Milan, which is a romance um, novella. And it is... Uh, there's also a bee flying around me, so just, that's happening. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of stuff going on right now. Um, so it's a, a novella in a, I don't know what the series is that it's a part of, and I did not feel like I missed anything by not having read any of the rest of the series. It's about 150 pages. It is a um, romance featuring two older ladies, which is pretty unusual, at least in my uh, experience of reading romance novels. And it was quite refreshing to read about uh, one of the main characters is 73 and the other one is 69. So that's quite elderly, really, uh, for a romance novel. It was really interesting to read from that perspective. The novella has some interesting things to say about how older women are basically not seen in society. I think that's still true today. This is a historical romance, takes place in the, I think in the 1800s. Um, so, you know, it's, it's horse and carriage and a typical, you know, ladies are only supposed to act a certain way, but our main characters don't act in the ways that a lot of other women might. So Beatrice, uh, the 73 year old is a widow and she's quite wealthy. And then our other main character is Vi Violet and she is 69 and she is the uh, proprietress of a rooming house. And she wants to get rid of Beatrice's nephew who is no good and doesn't pay his bills. And she needs to get him out of her rooming house. So the two ladies join for um, to get that done and it's funny and it's sweet and I just enjoyed my time spent with that uh, that little novella so that was really fun and I read that with my romance buddy readers Doris and Katie and then I read this graphic novel which uh, a friend lent to me so this one is not actually a book that I owned and the romance novel was an ebook that I read off Scribd so this is a graphic nonfiction about, basically, um, this is a graphic biography of this woman, Queenie, whose real name was uh, Stephanie St. Clair. She is a woman who uh, was originally born in Martinique in the Caribbean and came to New York and became um, basically uh, like the a gangster, a mobster. <laughs> she was one of the main 
mob figureheads in the this takes place in the early part of the 1900s 19 she's she's born in she left the island in 1912 and this uh biography flashes back and forth between her childhood in the caribbean and her um running her her criminal enterprise in harlem in the 1930s because in the 1930s prohibition gets uh, lifted and that means that the white mobs are no longer making money on prohibited liquor and they try to break into her her line of work which is the numbers games and she's very has been very successful in running these these numbers games and they want a piece of the action so they're trying to get rid of her and this is all about her life and how she deals with this sort of incursion on her territory by these white mobsters. Um, I thought this was excellent. I like blazed through this in like an hour. I will say, uh, I really love this hardcover edition. It has a map of Harlem in the front. Um, it's all black and white uh, cartooning. And it has this two page sort of like introduction history context piece. And it was recommended to me that I read that before I read the rest of the graphic novel because I, I normally skip introductions. And I think that's a really good uh, piece of advice. And I would also advise you to do that because it sort of tells you, it places you properly in the story, um, which might be hard for you to understand otherwise. So this is the style of the art. Uh, it's very simple, black and white, but it's very powerful. Very, very powerful. And this poor woman, I mean, she, I say poor woman, she has some horrible things happen to her. Um, and she just is determined to come out on top and to win this game, um, to not let the men uh, basically run the show. She's going to run the show. And I admire the heck out of her. She really took control of her life and was able to... Uh, make a place for herself in a society that basically told her she had no place. Um, she used her intelligence and her knowledge of numbers to really make a fortune and make a life for herself. And I think this is an incredible story. Would highly recommend this, particularly if you like um, if you like graphic nonfiction. I think this is a really, really excellent piece of, of graphic uh, work for nonfiction uh, type genre. So yeah, highly recommend that graphic biography. Now I'm currently have started two different shorties and I really don't know um, each of them, uh, one of them is really good, and one of them I almost DNF'd, and now I think I won't DNF it. So let's talk about the one that's really good, shall we? And that is Indian Horse by Richard Wagamese. This is uh, Richard Wagamese's indigenous man. He is... Um, he is, he lives, or he, I don't know if he's still with us. No, he passed away in 2017. He was one of the foremost writers in Canada, and he, um, talks about indigenous culture in his in his work and this one is about a young boy who um, we're learning his basically his life story from when he's a small child he is born into a family where his two older siblings have been taken away to um, residential schools and and uh, the brother is is runs away and comes home but is very sick uh and what happens to his family after that um and I won't go into it because I don't want to spoil anything but it's oh my god it's heartbreaking and it's so good and I'm I am how far am I have like 50 pages into it and um the main character here, Saul Indian Horse, has just been taken himself to residential school. And I just think it's going to get even more heartbreaking than it's already been. <laughs> it's been super heartbreaking so far, and I think it's just going to get worse. So that is my only quibble with this. It's so good. It's so well written. Um, Wagamese just writes so beautifully. If you like beautiful writing, like I am not one to like really notice beautiful writing a lot, but except when it's exceptional and it just like busts through <laughs> my like myopic vision and it's so beautiful this the way he describes the Saul Indian horse's family and the wilderness that they inhabit and their cultural um activities and oh it's just heartbreakingly gorgeous like everything about this book is heartbreaking from the writing to the story to everything so that's the only thing that's holding me up I have to keep putting it down because it, it just breaks my heart but it's really really good so I'm gonna be finishing that one and then I had also picked up this modern classic A Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess I read the first two chapters and I was like this is nonsense I can't read this this is this is like 
a made up language. He's just making up words. It's just, it's super violent. And like, what the hell is the point of this? So I then was like, I Googled something like, what's the trick to reading a Clockwork Orange? And lo and behold, I found out that there is an online glossary and you're supposed to like, use that to help you determine what the words are. And then of course, once you realize that all these nonsense words are sort of like based on Russian for some reason, so I don't know. I don't know. I've now read three chapters and I've sort of gotten the hang of the made up words. Um, but I'm also like, why, why, like, why write a book like this? Like, just write your story. Like, why do you have to, in, you know, use these tricks to like, I don't know, be fancy and special. And like some of this I read in the glossary is like a play on James Joyce. And I don't know if he's making fun of James Joyce or if he wants to be like James Joyce. Like, I don't know anything about Anthony Burgess. I just know that this was made into a movie with Jack Nicholson, right? Like everybody knows that. So that's like my context of this book. Um, and it's so violent. Like these, it's a, you're following this group of men in this futuristic society and they just wreak havoc all the time. They're like beating people up, stealing things, raping women, like just, it's gross. Like they're just gross. And I suppose that's the point, but I, like, I don't know, like, do I really want to read 200 pages of that? So I'm not sure if something else is going to happen here. So I guess I'll keep with it for a little while longer and see if, if something else happens. But if all this is going to be is these young men, like just being violent and causing havoc. Like, I'm not really sure I, I want to continue to read it. So we'll see. We'll see. That's what I'm working on. Like I said, it is Sunday. It is a gorgeous day outside, as you can see. Um, not quite as hot as it has been. It's been grossly hot here. So humid and so hot. Like, the worst it's been all summer. I don't know what's going on. September should be cool. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at. It's a little bit nicer today, but still pretty warm. Um, so I probably will take the rest of the afternoon and just do some reading. I'll check back in when I have something more to report. Chapter 15 of Indian Horse. There is hockey. Good morning. It's Monday. It's another work day, but I wanted to check in this morning and let you know that I finished another book yesterday. I finished Indian Horse by Richard Wagamese. And oh my God, oh my God, please read this book. It is so good. So this is the story of a young boy. He is indigenous um, from the country we now know as Canada. He is um, Anishinaabe, I believe, um, Ojibwe. And he is taken from his family and sent to a residential school and um, finds hockey when he's there. So this book is about hockey. I mean, not really about hockey. It's about this boy and his life and what happens to him. But hockey is uh, a means by which he uh, is able to um, find some relief and release in his life. And he is quite talented at it. So uh, this book is beautifully written. This book broke my heart and then punched me in the gut <laughs> and left me completely annihilated at the end. Um, it is, I will say, please, if, uh, please look up content warnings for this book if that is something. I mean, it's about a Native American child who gets sent to a residential school. So all the horrific things that you can imagine happening to a child in that situation happen. So please, uh, if that is something that you know is a struggle for you, please do check out the content warnings. But this is so beautiful. This book is so beautiful. It did not go where I expected it to. I just, I love everything about it. I think this is probably the best book I've read this year. It may be one of my best books of all time. Um, I look forward to rereading this book because it 
um, has left a mark on me now that I've read it. So yeah, we'll be reading more by Richard Wagamese for sure. Such a good book. Oh my God. And I am still struggling along <laughs> with the Clockwork Orange. I am now currently on chapter five. So page 48. Uh, it is slow going. I don't have to look up quite as many words anymore um, because I'm starting to get used to the rhythm and what the words sort of they there's a lot of repetition so once you realize what one word means you can you continue to see it throughout the story but it's so violent and I just don't know like if I can hang with this book so we shall see I'm gonna keep trying I'm gonna read some more of this today and we shall see how it goes It's time to finish up this mid-month book bash. I did not complete uh, A Clockwork Orange, but I did get to page 112. So um, I'm in part two, and I'm not gonna say anything about what happens in part two because I think I didn't know anything about this book going in. And I think that's probably the best way to do it. Um, I still, I mean, I'm getting the point now of what this book is about. <laughs> Uh, it took a while for me to understand what, what the author's doing here. I still think it's unnecessary to, like, make up a bunch of words to tell the story, but whatever. Um, I guess, you know, everybody's got to do what they want to do, and authors need to write whatever they want to write, but I don't particularly care for that uh, technique, I will say. So if this is uh, quite interesting, and I think that it's saying a lot about violence and what people who commit acts of violence and um, whether or not you can change uh, somebody who's done bad things and make them be good if that's something that is possible to happen. So it's sort of like looking at this whole idea of, um, you know, rehabilitation kind of thing and like what, what will it take to make somebody who's done some truly bad things, uh, can you make that person be good again. At least that's what I'm getting out of it so far. Like I said, I'm only on page 112. I got about another 80 pages left to read of this. So we shall see if I'm right about my thinking about what this book is about. So I think that was a very successful um, mid-month book bash. Let me see if I can hold up my stack of books that I had talked about. I'm going to put Clockwork Orange on there anyway, even though I haven't finished it. So that we can have a nice little stack of books here. Oh, let's see if I can do this with one hand. So that is the books from this weekend. That's pretty good, huh? I'm pretty I'm pretty happy about that. Pretty excited. Uh, so far, Shorty September is going really, really well for me. And I'm getting a lot of uh, enjoyment out of how many books I'm completing. So uh, I don't think that I'm going to be able to keep up this pace for the rest of the month. But so far, I've been really pleased with it. I hope you're all doing well and finding some great books to read. I will talk to you later.